When there's a sudden storm like this, it reminds you of how much we need protection physically. Of course, the Buddha would say, we need even more protection for our minds. Because the danger is not only from outside. A lot of things we need protection from are inside the mind already. A greed, aversion, and delusion present a lot of dangers. Our wrong views, wrong resolves, wrong actions. It's because of these things that we need refuge. And traditionally, we talk about taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. In the Buddhist time, it seems to be a common pattern. People who knew nothing about the Buddhist teachings come and listen to them once, and their first reaction is to want to take refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. This may be related to a statement the Buddha made about a teacher's duties to answer his students. One of which is to provide protection in all directions. Now, if we're talking about a theistic system, that would be asking the, asking the, the God to provide that protection. But in the Buddhist system, it means learning to be, be your own protection. We take protection in the Triple Gem, or the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha, as examples. For how we should provide protection for ourselves. And we get an idea of that protection by when the Buddha says there are certain teachers who did not provide protection, who left their students unprotected, basically giving them a no grounds for deciding what should and should not be done, or even that there would be such a thing as a should or should not be done. He talked about three kinds of wrong view about action. One is that what you experience in the present moment is totally determined by fate. Another is that it was determined by your past actions. Another is that it was determined by the act of a Creator God. Now, if the present moment were totally determined, then if you were killing, stealing, having illicit sex, that would be because of fate or your past actions or a Creator God. You'd have no way out. There'd be no grounds at all for even saying that something should or should not be done. From the Buddhist point of view, that is the most dangerous position to be in. Now he says that we provide a refuge for ourselves by practicing the Dharma, and particularly by developing the foundations of mindfulness or the establishings of mindfulness. But there's more to it than just that. Because first we have to have conviction in the Buddhist teachings, when he teaches about action, that what we experience in the present moment is partly determined by the past, but largely determined by our actions right now. That's a point that we can't prove yet, but we take it as a working hypothesis. And it's part of having conviction in the Buddha and the Dhamma that we take it on. Now, when that becomes dominant in the mind, the Buddha calls that the faculty of conviction. The Pali word, indriya, faculty, means dominant factor. When that's dominant in your mind, then you're protected. But it's not totally solid unless you develop the other faculties as well. There's persistence, where you actually try to act on your knowledge about the possibilities of skillful and unskillful action. Any unskillful qualities come up in the mind, you try to get rid of them, and then you try to prevent them from coming back. As for skillful qualities, you try to give rise to them, and once they're there, you try to maintain them. That's another way in which you provide protection or refuge for yourself. 
and that becomes the basis for the establishing of mindfulness. You focus on, say, the breath in and of itself. And you watch your mind as you're close to the breath. And whatever lessons you've learned about what's skillful and unskillful and how to encourage skillful qualities and discourage unskillful ones, you file them away right here. That way, when you focus on the breath, you're right next to where the file drawers are. So that's simply the act of taking a breath in, letting it go out. Connect as a reminder. You have these lessons right at your fingertips. And as you work on these qualities, applying the lessons you've learned. You're ardent, alert, mindful. Those qualities turn into the factors of jhana, which is the next faculty, or next dominant factor. You get the mind still. When the mind is still like this, then it can see itself a lot more clearly, with a sense of balance. And this lies at the heart of your refuge. I was talking with a botanist a while back. He was talking about how plants have to have a part of the plant that is in a state of quiescence. It's not being affected by the environment around it. It may not be a very large part of the plant, but it has to be there for the plant to maintain its integrity, to maintain its health. Because it's from that quiescence that it develops its strength. So getting the mind to settle in right here, having a sense of being at home right here, that's your shelter. That's your protection. So when storms come, outside or inside, you have a safe place to go. It may not solve all your problems, but it is your safe place. Think of a John Mun's instructions to a John Mahabua. When anything comes up in your meditation that you're not sure about, might be unusual forms of knowledge, intuitions, whatever, and you're not sure about it, just stay with the knower, he says. That's the quiescent part of just being aware right here. And watch as, as it passes. And no matter what, you'll be safe. And it may be that you develop some discernment, getting some insight into what really is skillful, what really is not. This is where you take the points that you've learned to take on as working hypotheses and actually begin to see what, when you do it, will lead to happiness, what, when you do it, will lead to suffering. Not as a matter of conviction, but as a matter of knowledge. That's when this home inside becomes really solid. The Buddha gives an analogy to building a house. You put up the rafters, especially the rafters for the roof, and then you place the ridge pole on top of the rafters. And until the ridge pole is up there, the rafters can still move around. But once the ridge pole is in place, everything is connected. Then it makes all the other rafters solid as well. Your conviction becomes solid. Your persistence, your mindfulness, your concentration becomes solid. You've got this place where you can ride out the storm. Think of those verses in the Taragata. The monk is in his hut, and he says, The hut is well sealed. The roof has no leaks. So if the rain god wants to rain, go ahead and rain. In other words, whatever happens inside or out, you've got your safe spot inside. It's your refuge inside. It 
because you know that as long as you don't do anything unskillful, nothing unskillful can come to you. And you can develop the good qualities of the mind around that quiescent center inside. You can develop the skill where you don't have to suffer even from the unskillful things you've done in the past. So this is where we look for refuge. We take these good qualities and we try to make them dominant in the mind, gather them around this quiescent center. And that will protect us from any storms. <laughs>